Okay, so yeah, we're going to be working through these questions, perhaps, or this topic in general, maybe over the next few lessons. You don't have to, can, but that's just the plan at the moment. And if you want to change your mind last minute, that's totally fine. But we've got these stickers here, we've, which we've identified some of the questions to focus on. Uh, we can do that. Um, and we haven't, that's, these ones haven't got any stickers on. That doesn't mean that we, you know, that only, it's only these two that we need to work on. It's just that I thought, well, let's stop labeling stickers at that point. What we did, in fact, we focused on this last one because um, you identified a, um, a stopping distances as a topic to focus on. So you weren't sure how to do this one to start off with, but you once I pointed out and gave you a couple of hints, you do have all the understanding of how to do it, but you weren't sure how to apply it, I guess, at the time. So, so yeah, we've got... Um, uh, we basically we've got a distance a velocity time graph and you can see it's flat to start off with and then decreases so the velocity goes down it stays the same and then it goes down so it stays the same because he's not pressed his brake yet and then he presses his brake and then he comes to a stop so the area underneath a velocity time graph which you knew is the uh, distance and so therefore, the yellow area or the greenish area is the is the uh, thinking distance, and then the blue area will be the braking distance. And you add the two together, that's the total stopping distance. So you could um, uh, you could have questions where the air, the first bit, if we compare A to B, the angle of this bit here looks to me to be about the same. So the braking distance will be the same because they're both also traveling at the same velocity. Um, and it looks like the brakes are, and you know, the road conditions, everything else is the same. The friction is the same because the angle is the same. Here. So the deceleration is the same. Um, but you clearly took a longer to react. And so the stop, the thinking distance is longer. Um, anyway, so the, a lot of the questions, a lot of the advanced questions are going to be relating to understanding what this graph is telling us. Um, we then had to go at these questions over here. And these really are just wordy questions. These four here are all very, very similar questions once you realize what's going on. We simply have an object that is being propelled along with a particular force, like this one here, 5,000 newtons, and has a resistive force of, in this case, 500 newtons. Um, that we can calculate the resultant force by taking away the resistive force from the driving force, giving us, in this case, 4,500. And, and then you can calculate the acceleration, maybe, by doing that divided by mass. So you're, combining, you're using the, for, um, the equation F equals MA, or force is equal to mass times acceleration. Um, but the force in question is the resultant force. And all the rest of it is just rearranging it and doing taking that sum and going backwards, so and doing in different orders. So you've got the forward force, the resistive force, the mass, and the acceleration, um, and you're just kind of like working it all out from that. Question eight was a slightly different one because we realized that it had resultant, it had the speed was constant, so therefore the acceleration is zero. If the acceleration is zero, then the, uh, the force must be zero. And if the force is zero, then the resistive force was the same as the pedal force. So that's how we identified that one. Anyway, yeah, so we'll keep working through this next lesson.